Cartesian coordinates, polar cylindrical, and spherical coordinates in three dimensions. We are considering a box, and in this box, let me call this length here is x naught. Then the length from here to here is y naught. And then length from this to this is g naught. So then in that case, you can say this is the point here. I call it C, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. Also, you can say this length is Y naught here. This one is X naught here. And this length here is Z naught. Is that right? This is Cartesian system. Now, when you are going to cylindrical coordinate, this is coming from the polar coordinates, R and theta. In this case, what happens, this is your X axis y-axis, z-axis. So the angle from x to y, that one is theta. And then r is the radius of this. So this is your r. All right. And then we are saying c is this length here. So then this is the point. Then you can call it p, r, theta, z. Okay, so this is my point P here. And then in the spherical coordinate, what happens? This is again y-axis, x-axis, z-axis, and the point is located here. In this case, we say from x, y, my angle here is still theta. Then this length here is a row, this is a red one. And the angle from here to here, this is phi. Okay. So for the complete cylindrical, theta range will be between 0 to 2 pi. In this case, your theta will be again between 0 to 2 pi, but phi will be the angle between 0 to pi. So then phi can go from all the way to this g-axis in here. So that will be the measurements now how we make the connections among all these systems so first of all when you are going from c to p that means i'm going from cartesian to the cylindrical so i will have x equals or x naught you can say in this case x naught will be r cosine theta y naught will be r sine theta and g will be z naught next when i'm going to cartesian to spherical coordinate the ideas are very simple x naught will be now r becomes a row here and then since you have cosine theta you just put here cosine theta and additionally multiply with sine phi and then y naught will be same as this Cartesian to polar, right row, sine theta, and then multiply with sine phi. And then z naught will be rho cosine phi. So these are all the connections. We can see, so I will write as a general case now. So we said that x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta so when you say x squared plus y squared that will be r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta if you factor out r squared you get cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta which is the known identity which is one so you just get r squared so remember, when you are saying x squared plus y squared, it is r squared. So this is the connection from Cartesian to cylindrical. We are saying x equals rho cosine theta sine phi, y equals rho sine theta sine phi, now, if we both sides square and add together, you get x squared plus y squared equals rho squared and sine squared 
pi you can factor out and then you will have cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta so that one is giving me rho squared sine squared pi and as you know x squared plus y squared equals r squared so then you can see r equals rho sine pi so that is also connection between cylindrical and spherical coordinates now let us see the distance between origin to point x y z i'm just taking a general point so then the distance in here if i consider with the spherical coordinate also i can call it a row so that will be x squared plus y squared plus z squared this can be written as r squared plus g squared under the radical sign 